Hey everybody, I'm Amanda. I also go by Keto Ginger. I've lost over 100 pounds eating a ketogenic diet and I do a lot of recipes and motivational stuff to help you do the same thing. Today's video is going to be a little bit different. First, I wanna talk about uh, one of my favorite products is going on sale, so we're gonna talk about that really quickly. And then I just kinda of wanna to touch base and talk about the climate of our country right now and the coronavirus and what we are doing as a family to keep ourselves protected and what we're buying from the store to make sure that we don't completely go off the rails in this stressful state. So first things first, if you are not new here, you will know I am a cheerleader for the company Perfect Keto. They make some of the cleanest ketogenic products on the market. Now, a lot of companies claim to do clean keto products, but you and I both know that when you read the ingredients, there's a zillion ingredients in there that you shouldn't be consuming, especially when it comes to quick products. A lot of the things that are quick and easy, unfortunately, do not have the best ingredients. That's how they make them quick and easy. So today, the 16th through the 18th, Perfect Keto is 20% off absolutely everything on their website. I will be sure to leave the link to the sale down below. I have a feeling people are going to really be doing a lot of online shopping in the weeks to come as we are all kind of stuck in our houses, not really knowing what we're doing straight up people are panicking i have a ton of favorite products from perfect keto but i'm going to give you guys my top three i absolutely adore their snack bars they are delicious and filling they have super clean ingredients and they don't leave me craving other sweets which a lot of the snack bars tend to do a lot of them are low carb but i have it and then i feel like okay now i need something sweeter something sweeter these don't do that to me the cinnamon roll is hands down my favorite flavor i absolutely love their instant coffee mixes I'm I'm gonna show you. This is them. They come in mocha and French vanilla. It's a five pack. You put the packet in a cup, you add boiling water, you stir it or you mix it up and it's bulletproof coffee on the go. This is so convenient for me, especially on work days, like long work days that I'm working a wedding and I'm running around for 10 hours. They really help to keep me filled, filled full <laughs> and they give me a ton of energy boost and I just I love bulletproof coffee if you're not a bulletproof coffee drinker like I hear you but honestly it's been one of my favorite parts of the journey since I started so those are a couple of my most favorite perfect keto products go to the website take a peek around there's definitely something for everyone and at 20% off go for it online chop your little hearts out that's what I'm doing Okay, so that's enough about Perfect Keto, enough about sales stuff. If you guys ever have any questions about products or you're looking for something to kind of fill a void in your keto journey, always comment or send me an email, send me a message on Instagram, and I will try to touch base with you to figure out how to find what is best for you. <sighs> you knew it was coming. We're gonna talk about coronavirus. Don't get scared. I'm not here to be a panicked, hysterical mess even though i am going through highs and lows of that myself full disclosure like most people i have an issue with anxiety my anxiety has gotten a lot worse since i had children i think that i have a tendency to tell myself that i'm totally fine it's perfectly normal you're okay you're just having a stressful moment but when genuinely scary things happen i really do i do spiral i do i don't want to lie to you guys and tell you like everything's fine i'm fine like because i don't feel like that right now i truly don't i feel truly afraid and not necessarily afraid of the virus itself i'm afraid of the people that are not heeding the warnings Okay, I'm not talking about the news warnings. I'm not talking about the shit that you guys are reading on 
the stuff that you guys are reading on Facebook. I'm talking about the legitimate science and biology that's wrapped around a pandemic of this proportion. We have never seen it in our lifetime. Our children will most likely not see something like this in their lifetime. This is history making. This entire event is going to be in the pages of our history books. It is terrifying. Stay with me. Yes, most people that do contract this virus are going to be able to fight it off all on their own, but the elderly and people that have compromised immune systems are going to have a lot of struggles. I myself have asthma. I take weeks to kick the common cold. And if you're one of my longtime friends here and you've been with me for a couple of years, you may remember the couple of instances where I did find myself with pneumonia from something that started off with the common cold. So I am being super diligent and super careful the, you guys know, I'm not going to sit here and repeat everything that you already know. Obviously hand washing, obviously isolating yourself. If you don't have to go somewhere, don't go. Take this seriously. I like a joke as much as the next guy, and I'm definitely guilty of posting some memes to lighten the mood on Facebook regarding the virus because I feel like we need to laugh sometimes to be able to kind of medicate our fear. I think that for me personally, this is an approach that I take with just about everything from hurricanes to pandemic viruses and everything in between. So I get that. I get the lightheartedness on that end. But I, I don't know about you guys, but I feel like the majority of the people in my life are not taking this seriously. They are still going out and doing the same things that they always do. They're still having birthday parties. They're still living their lives. They're still going to the movies. They're still going out to dinner. And this is exactly what I am fearful of. I feel, and again, just my opinion, like most people are sitting here going, oh, the media's got everyone all hyped up. The media, the media. Okay. The media is the reason all the toilet paper is gone. That is true. When you get on the TV, you say there's a state of emergency, people go crazy and they buy absolutely everything because they're scared they're going to get stuck in their house. That is frenzy of buying all of the things that is media related for sure what is not media related closing disney world during spring break cruise ships docking march madness sporting events being canceled south by southwest this huge concert that brings in like 300 million dollars being canceled trillions and trillions of dollars in events and travels being canceled that is not happening because the media was like oh hey there's kind of a virus no you guys those decisions are being made because scientists that have spent their entire lives studying preparing for something like this know more than they're telling us they are giving us warning to be like hey this is a drill this isn't a test this is not a joke so if you are one of those people that's not really taking it seriously and you haven't stocked up your cabinet with medicines and you haven't gotten you know the things that you need to be able to survive in your home for a month this is me telling you that I love you and even if we're wrong even if all of this is blown out of proportion I so much would rather you be safe and taken care of than sitting there wishing that you'd really heeded the warning this is not a drill. This is serious, serious stuff. I want to take a minute to talk about healthcare workers. On a normal day, when we don't have a pandemic virus, they are my own personal heroes. Your medical professionals and your people that are going to have to work right on through this craziness are some of the most selfless people on the planet. They are tired, they are overworked, they are exposing themselves and their family to all of this chaos just to be able to take care of you and your loved ones. So let's boost them up. Boost them up in positivity, boost them up in prayer, what Whatever makes you feel really good remember that these people are out here yes they're doing a job and they're getting paid for it but you guys at this point money isn't everything it really isn't your health safety welfare those are all things that are very very important those of you that are in the medical community and you are in places where this is impacting really hard, I am thinking about you constantly and sending you so much love because I just know how 
you guys have to be the calm of the storm to try and keep everybody else calm, but I know that you're scared too. And I know this because I've talked to some of you. I really hope that this ends up being the type of thing where, oh, we were overprepared or, oh, we made hasty decisions, but I'm sorry to say that the science and the math of the situation and what has happened in Italy and what happened in China, I'm afraid that this is definitely, we have reason to prepare to this level. So if you're not taking it seriously, now's the time to start. And not because I told you to, but because... I love you and I love our community and I love our elderly, but you guys, this isn't just, I'm young, I'm healthy, I'm fine. No, we're getting younger and younger cases. You have people like me that have asthma. You have people my age that have diabetes. All of those people have compromised immune systems and there is not enough supplies to take care of everyone being sick at the same time, okay? Because people are still gonna have heart attacks. They're still gonna get in car accidents. They're still gonna have strokes. They're still gonna have allergic reactions. The hospitals in our area, as I'm sure they are for the rest of you guys, are always a madhouse with a two hour wait when and there isn't a pandemic virus. I'm gonna get off my soapbox. As you can tell, I am at a heightened level of anxiety and awareness, but it's coming from a place of science. I am an absolute lunatic for reading research papers that are coming from people that study viruses for a living. My concern isn't coming from Facebook. It's coming from science. I love you all. I really hope that you have gotten everything that you need. And if you don't, reach out to a neighbor, reach out to the community. There are a lot of people in our community that are doing things to help people that maybe don't have the money for extra supplies. I know my girlfriend, Sydney, is currently making bag breakfast and bag lunches for all the students in our area that can't afford breakfast and lunches. There's a lot that you can do yourself to help even if it's just sending positive prayers into the universe, whatever it is, do that. Now, last year we had a huge hurricane scare and I did a video that kind of gave you ideas of things that you can do low carb uh, in a crisis. I will not reiterate all of those things right now. I'm gonna tell you some of the clip notes of it and then I will leave the link to that video up above. So if you are trying your hardest to stay keto and to stay sugar free during this chaos, it will hopefully give you some ideas of things that you can do that are easy. And funny enough, walking around the grocery store, plenty of keto food to be had. If you wanted pop tarts <laughs> and cereal and snack cakes, you might be out of luck. But if you're looking for things like beef jerky and cheeses and meats, there was plenty when I was rolling around. So I was really happy to see that. Also, hundreds of half gallons of almond milk, but no regular milk. So if you are trying to eat low carb or you're trying to start, now might be a good time. All of us are gonna have extra time on our hands to be able to do some of the things that were harder when we didn't have that time on our hands, like meal prepping, meal planning, organizing all your containers to be able to like portion out your food. We all are about to have extra time. All of us, mark my words, we are all about to be home for a couple of weeks, no matter what it is that you do for a living. I promise you that. Except for your friendly neighborhood medical professionals. They are probably about to live at the hospital for a couple of weeks. That makes me sad and scared, and I wish there was something that I could do for them. So nurse friends, holler down below. What can we do to help you guys besides positive thoughts? Like, what do you need? I know that everything is fearful of being contaminated, so it's not like I can send a snack basket or something, but what can we do as civilians to help make your lives better? I know the answer already. Stay home. Stay home. People aren't though, y'all. People ain't staying home. People are looking at this like it's a snow day and they're out living their best lives. They are, they are everywhere. So some of the things that were on my emergency list of foods, again, things like beef jerky. I really like the two pack that has like a meat and a cheese stick in one. All kinds of nuts, 
Um, nuts are higher in carbs, but if you are trying to eat to survive and you're trying to find snackies instead of eating chips, I really am loving pecans right now, walnuts, the lower carb nuts, and you can just eat a handful. They'll fill you up. And at the very least, if you're spiraling and craving some snacky food, usually a handful of nuts and some pickles brings me back down to earth. Also things like bulletproof coffee. It's going to fill you up. It's going to give you energy. To me, it's mood boosting because having that extra bit of zip really puts me in a better mood and helps me to kind of plan out my day and organize my thoughts. So bulletproof coffee is another really good one. I don't know if you guys are having trouble finding eggs or not. That's another one. You can have hard, I could live on hard boiled eggs and pecans for days, no problem. It's also something that's really easy to kind of whip up in a pinch is some scrambled eggs. So there's a zillion different things that you guys can do to kind of keep things low carb. But if you're a stress eater and you are off the rails right now, I understand. I understand. I'm not going to judge you. Our friends here aren't going to judge you. I will tell you that eating low carb helps to boost your immune system, which we all desperately need right now. So no matter how you're living, no matter how you're choosing to handle this with your diet and with your food, I am here for you and I support you. If you are watching this and eating ho-hos, good for you. I understand. Honestly, I think that people have a tendency to kind of get on their high and mighty and judge other people for eating during stressful situations. But that has honestly been a huge struggle for me my entire life is running to crappy food as comfort. So if you are doing that right now, please don't beat yourself up about it. Is it the best thing to do for yourself? No, absolutely not. Do you feel your best? Also, probably not. But I understand you're not alone. Trust me. I'm also really conflicted right now. I don't, my kiddos go to a full-time ABA center. It is not a public school. It is a private organization. They basically, we call it school, but they are basically in full-time therapy. Their therapy sessions are not being canceled at the moment. I can choose to voluntarily keep them home without any kind of penalty. But then there's the part of me that feels like in the coming weeks, it's probably gonna be mandated that they stay home. For kiddos on the spectrum that are used to a routine and used to a schedule and used to their therapies, keeping them home is not a vacation. They get very stressed and very scared that their routine has been disrupted and I'm not really able to explain to them in a way that they'll understand. So a lot of my nerves and anxiety is coming from that because I know that it's going to be really difficult for them to understand what is going on and to be okay with not having their regular routine. So that's a lot of where my stress is coming from. Where do you guys live? Are there any of you in Washington State or Northern California in any of the hotbeds of where this is happening? We have, I think, around under 100 cases confirmed in Florida, but they're already putting like the triage pop-up tents in our hospitals for people to drive through, I think, and get tested or to be able to do ER triage in a private location. That's already happening here with less than 100 confirmed cases. I know that is because they know that that number is going to continue to grow and grow and grow. So I'm gonna get off my soapbox right now. I really hope that I didn't freak any of you out. Although if you were calm and collected, it's time to light a fire under your ass and start making moves to be able to hunker down. Yeah, now's the time. And hopefully we are prepping for nothing, but we're probably not. That's all there is to it. I will tell you, knowing that I'm going to be home probably with my kiddos and with my family, that means that I'm going to have ample opportunity to create content. So some of our videos are probably gonna go outside of the box a little bit and a little bit outside of keto. I'm going to be doing a lot of sit down and chats with you guys and kind of checking in, seeing how everything is going, probably some more family activity stuff as well, and hopefully some cooking and some meal prepping. If I have the opportunity to be able to be there for you guys through this, I am happy 
to do it, even if it's just through feeling like you have a friend sitting here talking you off a ledge. I need that myself. So let's talk each other off the ledge. It's going to be fine, right? Everything's fine. It's fine. We are strong. We are capable. We are prepared or getting prepared and you should be too. I absolutely love you all. I'm so thankful to have this platform and to have you guys in my life so we can conquer all of the things that life hurls at us together. We are more than keto. We are more than weight loss. We are more than what we eat. We are a family and you know, family first, right? I love you all. I will see you really soon.